What would be your reaction if I told you that the Titanic didn't really sink? You might start to wonder what you have heard your entire life, right? People have spoken about Titanic and learned how it sank on that awful night in April 1912. Yet, some people believe that her sister ship, the Olympic, sank as part of an insurance scam. What is the reality then? Let's find out. In today's video, I'll go into that specific night and all of the events that lead up to this assumption. Make sure you watch this video all the way through to take a deep dive into the specifics. In the end, I hope you will make your own conclusion. The sinking of the Titanic in 1912 horrified the globe. The demise of such a technically outstanding ship cruelly demonstrated the limits of the human brain. However, a conspiracy theory that has emerged online in recent years, most recently on Reddit, asked the question, was the Titanic the one that sank? The reason why people believe the ship is not the Titanic dates back to September 20th, when the Olympic crashed with the HMS Hawk close off the coast of the Isle of Wight. This incident caused numerous problems for the ship's owners, White Star Line, because it meant that the ship would have to be pulled out of service while it was repaired. But it also meant that the Titanic's maiden voyage had to be rescheduled from March 20th to April 10th. This was something White Star Line could not afford to do at the time because they had legal expenses to pay as well as the cost of repairing the Olympic. This meant they had to devise a mechanism to recover not only the money they would have lost had the Olympics not been in operation, but also the money they couldn't recover as a result of the incident. All this gives birth to a plan. The strategy was simple. Combine Olympic with her sister ship Titanic and sink it in order to receive compensation. No one would know that the ships had been swapped since unless you looked at the nameplates on both ships, you wouldn't know which one was which. As soon as the plan was put into action, they set about making the Olympic look exactly like its sister ship by covering the floors with carpet because the Olympic has tile flooring and passengers and crew who had been on the Olympic before the Titanic would have been able to see the footprints left by previous passengers people would have questioned why this brand new ship with no one on board was covered in footprints and stains from spilled drinks if they hadn't done this. Other features of the ship would have been altered as well, such as removing cabins from the genuine Titanic's B-deck and replacing them with the Olympic promenade to make the transition more convincing. The portholes on the sea deck are the only thing that allows passengers to discern the difference between the two ships. The Titanic had 14 perfectly spaced portholes when it was pictured while being built, but when it left Southampton on her fateful maiden voyage on April 10, 1912, it had 16 irregularly spaced portholes. This is not the only evidence that may be gathered to support this theory. There are other persons who worked on the Titanic at the shipyard Harland and Wolf in Belfast, who have come out throughout the years to say that the two ships were in fact exchanged and that if they informed anyone, White Star Line told them it would be the last job they ever did. So they should have kept quiet, but they didn't because the families of those who built the ship are aware of the scam. Patty Fenton was one of the sailors who informed his colleagues that they had been exchanged. The government official read the crew, that, stressing that if they revealed the true cause of the sinking or rumors of an insurance scam, they would face a minimum of 20 years in prison. Another factor that could support his theory is the presence of the owner, J.P. Morgan, and 50 other first-class passengers. J.P. Morgan was one of many travelers who canceled their trip at the last minute due to illness. In fact, he was spotted in France two days later and appeared to be in fine health. Bruce Ismay's wife Julia and their children had previously canceled owing to his wife's illness, but they were photographed on a motoring vacation in Wales. One hour before the ship left Southampton, Morgan had seven priceless bronze statues removed. Many people feel that they both knew what was going to happen with the ship on its first voyage, especially after Morgan publicly said to the country that he would surely be aboard the ship. Morgan's true motivation for lying because he knew the ship was about to sink? Another thing that has confused people is how the ship titled SS Californian was able to find coal while the country was in the midst of a coal strike and how it left London with no passengers on board. Instead, there was a limited supply of blankets and warm clothing, possibly for the Titanic's passengers and crew. Captain Lord wasted no time in getting out of the port and into the North Atlantic, 
and the fact that he didn't sell any tickets for the voyage to Boston, despite the fact that there would have been hundreds of people wanting to cross the Atlantic, suggests that there was a plan in place to claim compensation on the ship. Captain Lord was in a hurry to get into the North Atlantic Ocean and had left the wireless chart he required behind. Of course, the SS Californian was only one of six ships within a 140-mile radius of the Titanic. When the assumed Olympic was taken out of service in 1935, part of the wood paneling and other pieces, notably the aft first-class stairway, were stolen and utilized in the White Swan Hotel in Alnwick, UK. The paneling utilized reveals a number on the frame that says 401, which was assigned to Titanic when it was built in Belfast, Ireland. If the paneling had been made by Olympic, the number would have been 400, not 401. Is this proof that the two ships were switched, or is it just a curious coincidence that both of these numbers exist on the frame of Olympics with paneling? Or was this done on purpose to help with the cover-up of the switch? Another fact is that when it came to advertising for the Titanic and White Star Line, the ship that was usually used was Olympic and its interior whenever they wanted images. This would seem strange given that people were paying for the Titanic's inaugural voyage rather than the Olympics. Was this done on purpose to aid in the transition? Everything said here is widely accepted as reality. Paths diverge at the Olympic accident. According to conspiracy theorists, the Olympic was an economic disaster following the crisis. Because of the litigation, repairs would not be paid by insurance, and it was not earning any money while sitting on the docks. As a result, the corporation made a decision. Its newly built second ship would be named Olympic, while its damaged older ship would be renamed Titanic. There are numerous other details. Separate reports, for example, point to the argument that the Olympic, rather than the original Titanic, is at the bottom of the sea. In the end, does this conspiracy really add up? When studied closely, none of the Olympic slash Titanic allegations can stand up to the incredible effort required for the switch. The two ships were not exactly identical. When the British Board of Trade inspected the Titanic, no such plates were discovered. However, no actual evidence of the Titanic conspiracy stands up to the historian's evidence. What are your thoughts? Is this hypothesis a hoax, or may it provide some valuable insights? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. That's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more historic content like this, subscribe and turn on the notification bells so you don't miss a thing. We'll see you back here soon. Have a great day.